and uh, we are about to get underway. A lot of burgundy in the house. Arkansas in the darker jerseys, and Kayla Timpson tips it over to Tania Latson, a 5'8 sophomore from Miami. It didn't take long. It doesn't take long. And if you're Arkansas, you got to get on that right hand. You got to force her to hit tough twos. Florida State coming off a loss to Stanford. And then Scott fires one up. Timpson tried to corral it. It was off of Douda, so the ball goes over to the Seminoles. We take a look at their starting five. Alexis Tucker is a grad transfer, played out at Cal in California. Sarah Bajetti using her final year of eligibility. And Omaria Gordon is having a, an incredible season, finally healthy. She absolutely is, as Tanaya Latson gets called for the offensive foul right there. Began the season with back-to-back 20-point -back games, did Omaria Gordon. He's able to finally have a chance to train during the offseason and not rest and rehab. Timpson with the block shot. That is one of her specialties. Sixth in the nation, leads the conference, averaging over three blocks per game. Timpson a couple of years ago came in rather raw and has really worked on her game. The most improved player in the ACC a year ago is extending her range. Brooke Wyckoff talked about asking her to shoot three-point shots this year. Out of with the miss, Timpson couldn't come up with it. So a second chance for Michaela Daniels, who came back to use her COVID year. She is a graduate guard out of Frederick, Maryland. Has started all five years. Timpson inside, a little bit too strong off glass. Both of these teams play at an incredible pace. Among the nation's leaders and getting possessions per game, and that's a nice finish for Samara Spencer. And both of these teams have guards who are really good at getting downhill. They want to get two feet in the paint, want to force defensive rotations. Outside shot, rebounded by Sailor Poffenbarger, who is a UConn graduate, or UConn transfer, pardon me, coming over and contributing terrific, especially on the defensive glass and averaging a double-double. And now Gordon, the diminutive point guard, Timpson, cleans it up on the glass, but then it was taken away by Daniels. Daniels working on Bajetti, who is a really good defender. I don't think the shot clock is necessary tonight. We don't need the shot clock. And both these teams really like to shoot transition threes, so they're going to let it fly from the three-point line. They're going to try to get two feet in the paint. Arkansas coming off a loss to Marquette, a game in which they missed 12 of their first 13 shots. They're just one of eight so far in this one. Daniels with her head up. Takes it right at Gordon. And then the rebound by Tucker. Who played her college ball at UC Santa Barbara. She got fouled. Brooke Wyckoff is the head coach at Florida State. She was a terrific player under Sue Semrau, graduated in 2001, and you actually coached her in uh, the WNBA. I had an opportunity to coach Brooke Wyckoff when she was a member of the Chicago Sky, one of my all-time favorite players to coach, and terrific human being is doing an outstanding job here with this Florida State team. Now with staying at her alma mater, there's a tie-up for both teams coming out cold in this game. Florida State has missed six straight shots. Arkansas four in a row. Seminoles have gone almost three minutes without scoring. Mike Neighbors in his seventh season in charge at Arkansas, coming over from the University of Washington where he coached Kelsey Plum. And she led the nation in scoring and scored more points than anybody else in the history of the game. And coaching his alma mater as well. That's Mike, right. He's a Greenwood, Arkansas neighbor. He is. And, you know, Mike Neighbors talked to us about in his seven seasons, this is the team that he feels like has the most opportunity for growth throughout the season as Amaria Gordon lets it rain from three. Gordon leading this team, averaging over two threes per game. That is fifth so far in the ACC.
And that's Omaria Gordon coming over and getting the weak side block. Getting it done on both ends. And you see there is going to be a crowd anytime tonight Latson puts the ball on the floor. Shooters have to be ready to shoot it, and Omaria Gordon was. Poffenbarger, her three doesn't land. Gordon. Cut off nicely oh, nice by look. Spencer, and then, yeah, terrific look in the finish for Timpson. You know, Maria Gordon is one of the best at just understanding who needs to get the ball, when, and how to get it to her. Brooke Wyckoff said she doesn't make a lot of mistakes. She's very good with the ball in her hand. She makes the right play. And very steady. Doesn't get emotional either way. Offenbarger, who played 12 games in her freshman season at Connecticut before deciding to transfer out. Getting a lot of playing time there. Scott has it rim out. Dalda tried to get it, and they say it's off of Gordon. Well, Maria Gordon's just so good at getting two feet in the paint and making the right play. There's going to be heavy help on dribble penetration. Michaela Timpson makes herself available. Pass was dropped right on the money. And Gordon getting a well-deserved rest as she's been zipping up and down the floor. And you have to when you play at this pace. You know, you, certainly you want to be in great shape, but in order to keep players fresh, to stay efficient when you play at this pace, to make sure that you're playing without turning the ball over at a high rate, you've got to substitute from liberally. And as you see, Gordon is leading the ACC in assist to turnover ratio coming into this game, averaging just under four assists per game and averaging over 16 points as a freshman. She was an all ACC freshman and seven points per game last year and is up that by nine points per game. So Latson, the most improved player in the ACC last year and Gordon got to be in the conversation. Sarah Bajetti with the perfect pass to Latson. Well, Sarah Bajetti, who is in her fifth year out of Helsinki, Finland, and just a really good defensive player, heady, terrific pass, and there's the drive. And the finish. Samara Spencer just does such a good job uh, of being a, a complimentary guard. Michaela Daniels. Scored about 13 points a ball game this year. Spencer as well, averaged about 14 points a game, can get to the rim at will. But Sarah Bajetti got done on the defensive end of the floor, and there is no transition defense for turnovers, for scores. Florida State got after it. Bajetti got the turnover, and that led to the break, and they got an easy two for Tania Latson. You should check out Inspire. No mask, no hose, just also Zillow and agent to get you that house. Virginia Tech, that is coming up 9 Eastern time over on ESPN, but in Dallas in which LSU was down by nine in the fourth quarter, came back to win and then beat Iowa in the national championship game. A little bit of drama in Baton Rouge. We got some a little good dust basketball. up going on, so trying to figure things out. This would be a great matchup, though. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Latson off the turnover, gets it back to Bajetti. And now left wide open. That three ball was a little bit too strong by Maya Bonner, who is in her first year at Florida State, coming over from Cal. Another turnover for Arkansas. One on two, but Latson took it right to Poffenbarger, who rejected it. Latson called for the ball. And she was promptly fouled by Poffenbarger. One of the concerns for Mike Neighbors was transition defense and the pace that, that Florida State plays with. And one of the ways to minimize those concerns is offensive execution. So turnovers for scores, making sure that they're taking care of the ball. And he talked about that with his team. He said, you know, we want to play fast, but we want to play functionally fast. We can't afford to turn the ball over 17, 18 times. We've got to grow in that area. Latson gets the free throw and uh, Florida State, when they take on SEC teams so far, Latson has gotten some stuff, some stuff done, including the career high 35 points 
at Florida. That's most by any ACC player this year anywhere. That looks good. That is the first three buried by Arkansas after they missed their first six. And that's Carly Keats off the bench. And she terrific ball movement, Pam. Yeah. I mean, you just come down, you drive, you force rotation, you make the extra pass, and that's exactly what Carly Keats does. Offensive rebound off the Bajetti miss. Latson fires it up. Poffenbarger comes up with the rebound. She's averaging over 11 per game. Had 21 rebounds against Louisiana Monroe. Just one off the Arkansas team record. There's a miss inside for Ellis. Now Snoop Turnage. Latson. Another miss, but the ball could not be corralled by out Ellis. It stays with Florida State. Terrific offensive possession right here for Arkansas. The drive, force the rotation, make the extra pass. Carly Keats gonna benefit from the fact that Sasha Goforth, not with the team now, has stepped away. And so Arkansas making that announcement. Another block this time by Ellis. And Sasha Goforth, fourth, a redshirt junior from Fayetteville, an Oregon State transfer, been having some medical issues and has decided to step away from the team. And uh, Mike, Mike Neighbors said that, you know, she can keep her scholarship, everything is there, and it's an open door, but she is not available now for the Razorbacks, and we certainly wish Sasha well. Took last season off from basketball, didn't touch a basketball for six months, returned to the team this season, has, has since had to, to step away again. And of course, Mike Neighbors talking about Sasha Goforth and how great it was to have her back, and. No, certainly making sure that her health and, and wellness is the priority. This Arkansas team gets the ball back. They already have three blocks tonight. They are third in the SEC, averaging just under six per game. And we have a final from Athens, Georgia. Duke in overtime has defeated the Georgia Bulldogs, so the ACC leads five to one in this inaugural ACC SEC challenge but Jetty with the left hand just had it rim out and now the drive you see the frenetic pace for both teams as Spencer is fouled Jetty now gets a rest for Florida State. Bonner coming back into the game. Spencer heading to the free throw line. Coming back close to home, Fort Lauderdale, which is not really all that close, but at least it's in Florida. A couple of Florida natives on this Arkansas Razorback team, including Talia Scott from Orange Park, Jacksonville-ish. Spencer delivers at the free throw line. Talia Scott, though, has yet to score. She is 0 for 5 from the floor, including missing all three of her threes. And I would an anticipate Mike Neighbors talking to Talia Scott about trying to get to the rim, trying to get to the free throw line, get a couple of easy buckets. And she's really good at getting to the free throw line. On average, seven times per game, that leads the SEC. Now, oh, this is really good individual defense. Keeping Tucker in front, taking the contact. You see the extension, the offensive foul by Alexis Tucker. That is the first on her. Now Arkansas with the ball and the lead. Scott gets her first bucket, but wipe it off the board. They have called an offensive foul on Talia Scott. Well, Talia Scott trying to get herself going, going to the rim, and Alexis Tucker does a good job of getting there, establishing position, and taking the contact. Another block underneath by Ellis, and now Scott is under the basket, holding her hand over her left eye. Looked like the follow-through of Omaria Gordon got Michaela Daniels in the face. 
Amaria Gordon goes up for the shot and comes down and just comes right across. Inverting contact, of course, but comes right across the face of Michaela Daniels. So Daniels has exited the game. Ellis comes back in. Scott sitting on the bench right now after being looked at by the athletic trainer, Simone Rush. There she is over on the bench. Don't expect her to have to sit for long. Coming up on a minute left to play in the first quarter. Position underneath, that's good work by Timpson. Left open, the three sails and goes into the bottom of the net. That's the freshman. Carla Villegas, who has only taken one two-pointer all year, and apparently she <laughs> stepped back by to accident. try to get a three, so it was an accidental two. That's what she does. She shoots the three. It's a funky flat release, yeah. but it goes, it goes in. in. And we saw her at shoot-around practice today, and she didn't go anywhere. It's almost like she's allergic to anything inside the, the circle. She was only throwing up threes. Does it again. She is a freshman from Spain. She's had extensive experience with some Spanish national teams. That includes throwing up a lot of threes, one would assume. And now Spencer hanging on to it. We've got a four second difference between the clocks. Try to get this handoff right here. Keats, that's a backup or a step back three, pardon me. Timpson tips it around. They got a hurry, but Florida State can do that. The heave to end the first quarter. Florida State will take a 13 to 11 lead. Neither team shooting the ball particularly well. Also on the ESPN app as we continue to have some terrific non-conference matchups before we get to the thick of the conference schedules. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you where we have two of the high powered, at least fastest teams in the college basketball world, but they're not making a lot of shots, and that's the seventh block already for Arkansas. Outside shot, bottom of the net for Spencer. Samara Spencer has been carrying this team offensively. She's got nine points in this ball game. Only three Razorbacks have scored. Again, great help defense. Dowda goes up with two hands, able to turn that into offense. In transition, you gotta match up, gotta find three-point shooters. This is what Arkansas does. They wanna lull you into that paint and spray for three-point shots. They average 33s a game. They take 33s a, a, a game, I should say. That is first in the SEC and six in the entire nation. That's Mike Neighbors basketball, Pulani Spurlock Welsh, Mai Forsberg, Bruce Morris, our officials tonight. Mike talking to Pulani over there on the sideline. Latson has been spectacular at the free throw line this year, has only missed one. And bounces Florida State back on top. Another three, that one a little bit too long. Got lucky there. You, you cannot yeah. shoot the gap when the shooter's on the floor right there. Ball's coming to the middle of the floor. You got to chase those shooters. And Carly Keats, probably one of their best three-point shooters with the miss. <laughs> there she goes again. That's Viegas, her third three attempt of the game. She's hit one of them. Settling things down, that's what she does. The fifth year player coming back to use her COVID year. A shovel pass over to Dowda, who was left open. And Daniels has really had to adjust her game with 
the addition of Talia Scott. Used to having the ball in her hands a lot. Talia Scott is a, is a volume scorer as well. And she's had to adjust. And, and Mike Neighbors said tonight, you're going to see her with the ball in her hands, initiating offense a little bit more. She allows us to play at the pace we want to play at, under control. Well, Diegas just hit her second two of the season on the last trip down. Florida State's transition was stopped. Watson took the shot. And Poffenbarger came up with yet another rebound. And then Timpson with the foul in the backcourt, her first. But yeah, Michaela Daniels, the fifth year starter out of Frederick, Maryland. That's in Western Maryland. And this is where you see among active players in the SEC. No one has more assists. She's also in the top three in steals and points in 12th and rebounding. Has started every game of her college Remarkable. career. So some great endurance for her, durability. And by the way, Poffenbarger already has nine rebounds. She's just so active on the defensive glass. She's an active defender. She goes to find the boards. Like Gaber's talking about, Sailor Poffenbarger, it's hard to take her off the floor. She just does so many things well. Scott still has not scored for Arkansas. Latson with the miss. Scott gets the rebound. True freshman from Orange Park. Body contact with Gordon. And Gordon will be called for the personal foul. That is her second. She takes a seat. We mentioned how often Scott gets to the free throw line. Leads the SEC both in free throw attempts, seven per game, and makes. And that is her first point of the night. Someone who's averaging 23 points per game, ninth best in the entire country among all players, not just freshmen. But as you mentioned, Step, that's a good way to get, get going, right? Your shot's not falling from the floor, get to the free throw line. Continuing to attack the rim, get to the free throw line, see the ball go through the bottom of the net. Well, she's back in her home state. Of course, she's putting a little bit of pressure on herself to perform. In, in a tough matchup, and you look at Arkansas's schedule in these three games, Marquette, Florida State, then they come back and play UCLA. This is a challenging time for this young team. It sure is a tough stretch. Timpson elevates, boy. What a player. And Pam, two years ago, we weren't seeing that from KK Timpson. And that her development and continuing to become a better, more polished offensive player. She's always been a terrific defender, just like that, and rebounder. One on two, Timpson switched it over to her left hand and couldn't finish. I like the move in transition, though. I like the fact that she's bringing the ball down the floor. She's expanding her game. Brooke Wyckoff has talked about how Timpson's leadership and vocal leadership in particular has picked up this year. Bajetti, catch, shoot, missed, but another offensive rebound. And that defense by Poppenbarger induced the travel. Tucker goes out for Florida State. Snoop Turnage. Comes back into the games. Turnage and Latson were high school teammates. I bet that was a pretty good team. <laughs> I bet they were. Good look at Snoop, whose given name is Brianna. In the background there, we had a shot of Mac Leonard, who's helping in operations for Florida State and is an outstanding softball player here. Wanted to get a taste of what the other side yeah, is like. Wants to go into administration. Wants to be a boss someday. Good for her. Scott with another miss, so it's not gotten a field goal to fall. This is not the Talia Scott that we have seen heading into this game. Been a dynamic score. Oh, that's it. Come on. Brooke Wyckoff talked about Tanai Latson's ability this year to read def defenses better. So they don't allow her to come off of the on-ball screen. Instead of trying to press and attack off of it anyway, she rejects, she goes to the rim, she reads the help, she's paced, 
she's poised and she's able to finish. Yeah, national freshman of the year, but still room for improvement. So now between your freshman and sophomore years at Purdue, did you notice that you had a lot <laughs> to do? Uh, yeah, of course, you certainly do. You, the game slows down for you the older that you get. You start to adjust. And I wasn't at the top of the scouting report the way that Tanaya Latson is, but just look at the read. Oh. She goes around the defender. Talia Scott hampered with those two fouls. She stays in control and finishes the play. It's like a science project. <laughs> Ordering lunch. Easy for you and me, but can be so difficult. Touched the Florida State family, and Brooke Wyckoff had surgery back on Halloween for uh, breast cancer. Said so they're, they're very optimistic. They think they got it all, and it's still very early in the process, but it's out there, and it, it touches people. She's only 43 years of age. We mm -hmm. lost Tasha Butts at the age of 41. Yes. Also, uh, earlier this autumn, so... Uh, Please, the, the V Foundation has done tremendous things. It sure has, and if you are able and, and, and willing to donate the impacts uh, and the lives that it's saving, it's it's incredible. And Brooke Wyckoff talked to us and said that she's feeling really good. She missed one exhibition game and was back on the bench yep. for the opening game of the season. Yep. Remarkable, has a daughter Avery who just turned 10 last week. And remember, 100% of your donations go directly to cancer research. And Florida State now up 23 to 16, thanks to a 6-0 run. Arkansas has missed eight straight shots. And there's an offensive foul. Everybody in the stands called it as well before Bruce Morris made it official. Well, Sarah Bajetti, one of the best defenders in the ACC, does a great job of getting in position and prior to that tonight lats and no doubles coming she creates space and again i think that's where we see some growth because her pace she's pivoting she's looking she's not finding anyone coming to double to help and so she goes up into the shot a year ago she might have been sped up in those moments simpson draws another foul You know, we talked about K.K. Timpson being the most improved player in the ACC a year ago and continuing to grow her game. Pam, I think she's still just scratching the surface, especially of what she can do on the offensive end of the floor, you know, really polishing and honing her skills. And there you see six of the nation in both blocks and offensive rebounds per game. She's a player that Brooke Wyckoff says we need to get her more touches. It's difficult because of the way that they play in transition and anybody can bring it up. They want to shoot quickly in offense. So oftentimes guards get the heavy shot opportunities. So out of timeouts, after free throws, anytime they get a chance to make a play call or slow it down, it's an opportunity to get Timpson a touch. Well, both of these teams are very similar, very guard heavy. and certainly a special player. Pop Poppenbarger finally gets one to fall. Sailor had missed her first six shots, including all four from distance. She's already into double-digit rebounds. And I like that action. That action because that penetration forced a drop, and there was a miscommunication in the popping by Sailor Poppenberger. She's going to continue to shoot the ball. Oh, yeah. Shoot or shoot, right? Timpson somehow was able to collect the ball in traffic and send it home coming off a double-double against Stanford. That game had an amazing first quarter. Poffenbarger's turn to draw a foul. This double high on ball here is really tough to defend. All the defense, you see one, two, three, Jersey sucked down into the paint. Poffenbarger wide open on the kickback. And then Timpson just corralling the loose ball, able to go up through a little bit of contact and finish. But Sailor Puffenbarger is such a tough matchup. She really can play positions one through five. She's a, a point forward, so to speak, and hasn't shot the ball particularly well today, but has the ability to stretch from the three-point line, can handle and be a decision maker with the ball in her hands. It doesn't get stuck. She makes the right play. You guard her with a guard, she's going to post you up. You guard her with a big, she's going to attack and make a play. Really a Matchup nightmare. She was on the SEC all freshman team last year after transferring from UConn. And turnover 
sends it back to Arkansas. Poffenbarger from Middletown, Maryland, the same county in which their other starter, Michaela Daniels, is from. Just a little geography, Western Maryland. Those Maryland natives. Yeah, not a lot. Fewer people out west, but producing some really good basketball players. Poffenbarger certainly finding a home in Arkansas. There's a three from Daniels. And another rebound for Timpson. Hesitation, and then the hands in the lane. Florida State turns it over as we approach two minutes to go in the half perfection for Talia Scott. And that's her first made field goal of the game. So a little Arkansas run. Timeout in Tallahassee. You're finally mastering grandma's 12 hour sauce. Your stovetop gave out in the 11th hour. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems. Protect what you don't expect. Visit ahs.com and get a free quote today. Shopping online comes with digital threats. So turn on NordVPN. Steer clear of phishing websites and encrypt your online traffic. Get the deal now. Coming up at 9 Eastern time, Angel Reese back on the floor for LSU. What great timing because they're playing number nine Virginia Tech in a rematch from the Final Four. We're going to hustle out of here and watch that game. And right now, Florida State leading Arkansas by four. There's an illegal screen call. Florida State coming into this game. 13th in the nation in scoring, averaging 88 points per game. And right now they're only a quarter of the way there with two minutes left to go in this half. And, and neither team, it's not because they're not getting the shots. They're getting the looks that they want. Right now they're just not knocking them down. Another miss from the outside. Good hustle by Daniels to chase it down. Poffenbarger, Gouda, terrific ball movement. Four players touched it, but it, it Scott could not get the three. She's 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. And there's a, oh, why not, three by Turnage. She was only 2 for 4 on the season from out there. Oh, good hands. That's what she can do. And Florida State gets it right back, or uh, Arkansas does, as the Florida State fans were asking for a travel. Spencer. A lot of contact, but no call as Turnage got a piece of her. And another play, that length you talked about with Poffenbarger. She's a, she's a problem on both sides of the floor if you're an opponent. And there's a three buried by Scott. And we saw some of this on the Arkansas end in the first quarter, turnovers for scores, and now Florida State returning the favor. Arkansas able to get out in transition, able to get those rhythm threes. Pajetti drove it, lost it after some contact. Turnage hangs onto the ball, and the possession arrow will keep it with the Seminoles. I mean, good hands by Poffenbarger. This is what she can do. She can guard one through five as well. She leads the break. Again, you drive, you draw. Great poise by Scott, able to knock that shot down. Shot clock is off now. Timpson works inside, and another block. Arkansas with a chance to take the last shot of the half, and if they bury it, they'll take a lead into the locker room. Everybody looks over to Mike Neighbors to get some guidance. Spencer guarded by Bajetti, their best perimeter defender. Poffenbarger, couple of feet behind the three-point line, and she beats the buzzer. So a slow seven minutes were left in the second quarter, but as Steph mentioned, there was a, a two runs, a 9-0 run and a 12-2 run as for Arkansas to close out the quarter. There's Timson starting things off with the block. And then the shot cups out for Tucker. 
Timson able to tie it up, and with the arrow, the ball will stay on this end of the floor. Let's take a look. Arkansas with that great flourish to end the quarter, and Florida State usually takes care of the basketball, but turned it over 10 times, and Arkansas, after a very slow start, has hit five threes, just a couple of threes falling for this Florida State team that has averaged 88 points per game. There is another block. Well, Miriam Dowd has done such a good job of using her length inside, staying vertical, altering shots, and Scott yeah. finds the rim again. Well, you knew it was only a matter of yes. time before she got started. She's ninth in the country, averaging 23 points per game, and she is already now into double figures, and now an offensive foul gives it right back to the Hogs. Terrific cut by Puffenbarger, draws into secondary defender, the extra pass by Daniels. And one of the things that Mike Neighbors loves about Scott is that she's, you, you haven't seen her get frustrated, right? She, she's, she's poised, she's mature, you know, beyond her years. She doesn't get frustrated, she continues to play the game, allows it to come to her. Meanwhile, on the other end, Gordon just picked up her third personal foul for Florida State. All the way to Dowda, who spots up for the three. Oh, and Poffenbarger is just a beast on the boards. Working double-digit rebounds in the first half alone, and another drive and a score, this time for Daniels. Extra possessions, doing a great job on the offensive glass. This is a team in Arkansas that averages about 12 a ball game, getting extra possessions. Pajetti didn't score in the first half. That's a nice feed over to Timson. And you mentioned the third foul for Omaria Gordon, and no, I don't think it's a coincidence that Omaria Gordon saddled with those two early fouls, plays less than 11 minutes of the ball game, and Florida State's turnovers are up. She is a primary ball handler. She has it in her hands as Bajetti. This is a great find on the drop pass to find Timpson for the easy two, but this is why Omaria Gordon is so important to this Florida State offense. Not just scoring the basketball, managing, right. dictating, taking care of it, getting it in the hands of the right people at the right time. Having a breakout season, had a heel injury last year, finally healthy, great numbers this year, and as you mentioned, the floor leader very good at handling the basketball and first in the ACC in assist turnover ratio and she is on the bench now with three fouls that flat out just came out of the bucket for Tucker and Florida State is ice cold Daniels loved it leaving her hands as well she should I mean Brooke Wyckoff yes she's got to want a timeout biggest lead of the game Arkansas up by nine But we knew this is an Arkansas team that can catch fire quickly and they can score a lot of buckets. And it starts getting the defensive board, getting out in transition, knocking down the three is Daniels. Item 15's on us and four lines of unlimited for 25 bucks a line. What do you think of the Jack? If you haven't heard by now, LSU is welcoming back Angel. And there's Stephanie's Fab Five freshman in the country. This freshman class is outstanding, electric. You see Juju Watkins, Hannah Hidalgo, Talia Scott, who we're seeing here today. Michaela Williams, you mentioned it, dropped 42 on Kent State. And Malaysia Fulwiley in South Carolina, one of the most electric players in the country. But Arkansas, after a sleepy start, has absolutely come alive. Pothenbarger with another three, and she has a double-double now with seven minutes left to go in the third quarter. She has had a terrific season so far. Well, we mentioned the pace. Both of these teams want to push in transition, and it's so important to get matched up. Poffenbarger gets loose. She was heating up in that second quarter, and she's come out hot in this third. That is her third three of the game. Arkansas outscoring Florida State now 12 to two in this quarter. To elongate what was just a two point lead at the half. 
Rebound offensive, pulled down. Gives them another chance, but Turnage able to get the rebound for Florida State really struggling. This is now a 7-0 Arkansas run. That's an extra step by Timson to turn it right back over. One of the differences that we're seeing, you know, both of these teams want to push in transition. Both of these teams very good at dribble drive action. But Arkansas catching on the extra pass, making the extra pass, dribble drive catch, extra pass shot. They're moving the ball, multiple players touching it. For Florida State, sometimes having a tendency to just go one on one, trying to make plays on their own or one pass in offense. You're not seeing two or three ball getting from one side to the other as Dowda gets an easy two. Out his first field goal of the game. It's a 14 point advantage. So you know, get stuck right there instead of just going to the other side, getting to the next pass, getting to the next action. And they're not getting any offensive rebounds either. Dowda got that one for Arkansas. And then the nifty move. For Scott, it's an 11 to nothing Razorback run. Big miss that time in it by Watson. It's a great attack in transition. Again, it's not there. No over penetration. Find the next pass. Find the net next action. And Scott then attacks on the closeout to get the. It looks like an easy two, but that's a tough float game shot right there. And coming back into the game right now, Mario Gordon, who has been sitting with three personals and good move, right? They can't. They need her back in before this gets even more out of hand. Yeah, I think you got to have her on the floor. Decision maker, getting players the ball. She's also a scorer. But right now, Florida State just, just not playing very well together on the offensive end. It's not time to panic. You, you get a couple of stops in a row and a couple of scores, but everybody's trying to make the play on their own. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Gordon showing her quickness, put it up left-handed and got it to fall. And that's a heck of a move by Omari Gordon. Splitting the defenders, finishing with the left. But no energy on the defensive end. So you get a chance to kind of chip away, get a couple of scores. Here comes Gordon. Arkansas, good job to get back. That missed everything. The shot by Villegas. And the finish by Michaela Daniels. Arkansas, plus 14, outscoring Florida State, 14 more points in this quarter. And they're also starting to take over on the, on the boards. Gordon, unable to get it, rebound. Second chance opportunity thanks to Turnage. And then Hunter got caught up. And another. Welcome back to Tallahassee. Mike Neighbors, the uh, head coach for Arkansas. He has a sort of a different way of, uh, of speaking. And it's unique. what is he saying? It's unique, yes, of course. <laughs> Rabbits running the floor, scoring quickly. We've got a couple examples of, of some things right here. The Rackers bring the ball up, get into the rack. Right here, we're going to talk about the lock. Get the ball out in transition, win the race to the corner. Sailor Puffenbarger does that, and she's able to knock a shot down. 
and out of transition. Get the rebound, bring it up, get to the rack. This is a racker. I like the eight ball right there. Yes, Michaela Daniels has it. Knocking it down. It's unique. You know, I think it's fun probably for his team. You know, Mike Neighbors is a unique guy. He's, yes. he's got his he's hands a in a lot of things. He, he's, he's a musician. Uh, he collects bunch boxes, cassette tapes. You know, he, he's a guy who, who enjoys life, enjoys basketball, gets his team involved in a lot of his fun things. And he's got to be very happy with what he is seeing, particularly here in the third quarter. Florida State has hit two shots from the floor and turned the ball over four times since they were down by only two at halftime. Another rebound for Poffenbarger. And at 21 against Louisiana Monroe earlier this season and nothing but the bottom of the net for Scott. Well, what an effort by Arkansas in this ball game. Struggled mightily in the first quarter and, and part of the second quarter, but stuck to it, stayed the course, found their rhythm, able to knock down shots, and now dominating this third. Absolutely, they have scored 21 points in this quarter after scoring just 28 in the first half. Seem to be getting every rebound as well. Florida State has missed 10 of its last 11 to fall behind. Keats trying to drive in and make something happen. They have eight seconds to shoot. And boy, Brooke Wyckoff trying to figure something out brings four subs in. And Brooke Wyckoff's got to be challenging her team. You know, we, we haven't been in this situation before. Certainly had a tough loss at Stanford, but always felt like they were right in this ball game. What are you going to do on the nights when the shots aren't falling? Can you find ways to get stops? Can you find ways to get some easy ones? With one second left on the shot clock, and this underneath out of bounds. Great block there by Timpson. Yeah, they lost to Stanford, but led that game by seven before eventually falling by 12. This is the first game they have played in a week when they last played Stanford. And Gordon bringing the ball up. Trying to make something happen, and we'll have a chance at the free throw line. And I like that take by Omaria Gordon. You certainly don't want to continue to you know, go overs or trade twos for threes, but get to the free throw line. Stop the clock. Get some easy ones. You got to find something to give you some momentum. But at the end of the day, and Brooke Wyckoff talked to us about this, like our team has to be better on the defensive end. And if you're trying to chip away at a ball game, you've got to string stops together. Gordon gets the free throw to fall. The fewest points that Florida State has scored all year in their first six games was 79 when they beat Florida by four. And they're not going to get anywhere close to that tonight. Arkansas really turning things on since about three minutes left to go in the second quarter. Another rebound. Dowda gives him a second chance. Just making the hustle plays, getting the 50-50 balls, doing the little things that it takes to win tough matchups on the road. Oh, from way downtown, Poffenbarger nailing yet another three. That is her fourth three of the night. stays with Florida State and after a slow start she's red hot well it's so good look at the slip out there's confusion on the defensive end there's not really a screen so are we switching are we not two players went to the ball handler no rotation Poffenbarger has been killing them with those lane line threes and also damaging them on the glass Offenbarger now has 17 rebounds. 15 of them on the defensive glass. That three rims out. Timson gathers the miss. We get close to just 30 seconds left to go in the half. But Jetty can't get it to go. 
Scott cut off and decides to get some help. Some of the uh, Arkansas players might be just taking their time getting up, trying to take as many seconds off the clock as possible. Poffenbarger just missing as a Arkansas Razorback third quarter comes to an end. The Razorbacks outscored Florida State twenty and kicks off tomorrow night. Oregon and Washington start off, pardon me, in the Pac-12. A lot of folks here are interested in the ACC Championship, Louisville and Florida State on Saturday and the College Football Playoff Selection Show Sunday noon Eastern time on ESPN. And we will find out who will be in the college football playoffs as well. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you. And that third quarter was all Arkansas. It absolutely was. Now they started to heat up in the second quarter and came out on fire. Five threes, moving the ball, did an outstanding job on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, you can see the numbers right there. Nine to two in terms of made field goals, crushing Florida State on the glass. The difference is a three-point line. Pam Arkansas, 10 of 34, two of 18 for the Seminoles. And including Poffenbarger, who got off to a slow start, missed her first seven shots. And since then, she is four for seven, and four of those makes were from three. She also has a monster 17 rebounds for Arkansas. This is a Florida State team that is among the nation's leaders as far as offense is concerned. And they have really struggled here against Arkansas. And you, when you watch this Seminole team offensively, they're getting some good shots. They're not going in. I'd like to see them play together a little bit more. Oftentimes, when, when you're really trying to, to get something going, everybody sort of puts it on themselves and wants to make the play that starts the run. They've got to get multiple touches. They've got to force defensive rotations, get high percentage looks. They are shooting just 21% from the floor. Scott delivers again at the free throw line. Tucker picked up the foul. And one player has been playing well all night is Michaela Timpson, and she draws another foul. This one from Dowda. Timpson now has a double-double herself. improved player in the league last year, also on the all-defensive squad. And Arkansas with his healthy lead, slowing things down a little bit. Hoffenbarger kind of Running around the three-point line, wants the ball, but instead the three is taken and hit by Spencer. You know, if, if you're the Seminoles, you've got to make an adjustment in how you're playing the on-ball screens as Alexis Tucker knock, knocks one down. Arkansas has gotten hot. You can't continue to go underneath on-ball screens and give them that much space. It's Tucker's first basket after she missed her first four shots. The Cal transfer. But look at the spacing for the Razorbacks. Great spacing. It gives them opportunity to, to play one-on-one -on -one to attack, to force long rotations, to find their teammates. That's another three. It's time by Gordon. That's a lead back to 17. They have trailed by as many as 23. 6-0 run on back-to-back -back threes for the Seminoles. Daniels picks up her dribble, shot clock dwindling. Step back three, nailed by Talia Scott, the super freshman. 
delighted. What a play, lead back up to 20. Pam, that's just a tough shot. Ooh. It's a terrific individual move. Just a little hesitation and the step back to create space, but the strength, the ability to stay low and explode into the shot. The bench was loving it. You see the smiles. Welcome back to Tallahassee. Talia Scott, one of the best freshmen in the entire country, did not score until there were seven minutes left in the second quarter. And since then, she's been getting it done. Just really a tr tremendous effort. Her ability to stay composed and stay poised on the road, you know, against a top 25 opponent. And she was really struggling early. Yeah, absolutely. And since the three minute mark of the first half, Florida State has been outscored 41 to 14. They led by as many as eight points. And now they're down by 20. 15 ranked team in the country just one loss on the season that was her last game against Stanford Scott's three that time missed everything and another block by Poffenbarger the follow though is true by Timpson and Pam since that that moment that you're talking about when the run started in the second quarter Florida State had Samara Spencer was three for four from the floor the rest of the starters one for 20 but again, they stayed true. They stayed the course. They did what they continued to do best and finally found a rhythm on the offensive end. Three from Tucker, that's her second. They're now down to 15. The Florida State men last night had a 17 point lead with about seven minutes left to game, left in the game and eventually lost to Georgia. And Florida State women trying to turn the tables and have a big comeback of their own. Poffenbarger had to get it off. And here come the Knowles. One more, yep. That's a good look. The drive counted and the foul. Court. And this is what we hadn't seen from Florida State up until this point, the extra pass, right? It's been one pass and then trying to make a play. This time the extra pass, Omaria Gordon didn't like the three, but attacked the closeout on the baseline. Her ability to shield the defender and finish with contact. Dowda just picked up her third personal foul for Arkansas. Gordon, a perfect three for three from the line. It's a 14 to three Florida State run. Now down a dozen. Can trailing by as many as 23, sorry. And can you string multiple stops together? These are times where coaches are talking about, we gotta get three in a row. We gotta get three in a row and score on the other end. Crowd calling for defense right now. Offenbarger. Now over to Scott. Another shot clock winding down. Poffenbarger with the big offensive rebound. Five minutes to go in the fourth. That is the 20th rebound by Poffenbarger. And now an offensive foul. The Seminoles get it back. Well, Mario Gordon does a really good job of getting in position can see just the slight extension by Spencer. Gordon, such an important component, had some foul yes. trouble in this game, and that's probably not coincidentally when Arkansas started its run. Yeah, no question about it. Mario Gordon being on the floor, being available for this team is going to be so important. A shot missed. That's the 21st rebound for Poffenbarger, which Sets her career high. She had 21 in a game earlier against Louisiana Monroe. And she is now one away from tying the Arkansas record. Spencer nails a three. Three ball starting to fall. Big time for Arkansas. 
And that's a big momentum stopping play. Big time, 13th three of the game for the Razorbacks who average about nine per game. Second in the SEC and they're crushing that tonight. But boy, Poffenbarger, so important. Another double-double, 21 rebounds to go along with 13 points. And that was after she missed her first seven shots of the game. That's it, she's now tied the Arkansas record. 22nd rebound for Saylor, Hoffenbarger. Inside four minutes, and keep it here. Gonna get a foul on NC State on the box out attempt, or uh, Florida State, pardon me, on the box out attempt. North Carolina on my mind. They're down by four now to South Ooh, Carolina yes. as they are playing over on ESPN. Inaugural ACC SEC challenge wrapping up tonight. Kajetti went for the steal. Scott left open, missed the three. And the ball goes out of bounds. Nice play by Scott. Latson couldn't hang on. Arkansas has missed seven of its last eight shots, but still with the healthy lead. Their next matchup, you mentioned it, they're going to take on UCLA at home. And UCLA also is a team that Florida State will be playing next weekend. And Corey Close has her team playing wow. excellent basketball. Corey Close, who had been an assistant here at Florida State. Longtime assistant for Sue Semerow, working alongside Brooke Wyckoff as well. The Jetty called for the foul with just over three seconds left on the shot clock. She's a little perplexed by it. Sarah having an off night offensively, to say the least. She has not scored. She averages over 10 per game. She's 0 for 8 from the floor. Very frustrating night. They're hitting just 26% of their shots. And this is a team in Florida State that has five average and double figures, and they're going to need that. And that, that is what will make them dangerous throughout the course of this season. Scott with another tough shot. Gets it to fall. She's just really smooth, really poised under control. Certainly we have so many outstanding freshmen throughout the country this season, and Talia Scott is one of them. Absolutely, so she has 22 to lead all scores. 22 points. And again, did not score until seven minutes were left in the second quarter. And since that three minute mark, Arkansas has owned this ball game. Florida State takes a timeout, but how about Sailor Poffenbarger? She's been outstanding, Pam. Again, she started off cold on the offensive end of the floor, but was dominant from the opening tip on the glass. And she is just an outstanding defensive rebounder. She tracks the ball, she goes to get it. She doesn't wait for it to come to her. And then she got it going in that second quarter, stretching the floor with the three ball. Does a good job of ghosting the on-ball screen, making herself available and knocking down shots. Certainly has. All four of her field goals tonight have come from the three-point line and the 22 rebounds, an Arkansas record, and another double-double for Poffenbarger, the second of the season for her, sixth of her career, her second year playing for Arkansas, transferring from Connecticut. The Jetty finally gets her first points of the night. We are now inside three minutes to go. Inside, that's a terrific feed. Spencer found out it. Well, Florida State trying to trap the on-ball screen. If you don't have the rotation, you're gonna be vulnerable. Holy, Timson really 
crash to the floor hard. Dowd has been called for the foul. Timson, five of 10 from the floor. She's got a double-double, 12 points and 12 rebounds, but concern as she was, she's holding on to her right elbow. There's contact, it looks like her feet got tangled up with Talia Scott. And fell right on that elbow. Yeah. Yeah, Dowda not making the contact, you're right, she just kind of got clipped. And Scott running into her feet. But the foul called on Dowda. And now Timson sits down. And Sakai White heads to the free throw line. First year at Florida State. Played at North Alabama and Jones College before coming here. She goes one for two. Arkansas has done a really good job in this fourth quarter of controlling tempo. They want to play fast. Mike Neighbors wants his team to get up and down, but knowing when to slow it down, when to execute. Can you execute in the quarter court? And we're finding out that they can execute very well in time and score situations. Absolutely count it and the foul for Dowda. Now Mike Neighbors said that his goal for this team was to play functionally fast. And they have done that, and now with this big lead, as you mentioned, doing a good job of executing without having to play functionally fast. And, and there are going to be times where they have to do that, where you've got to control the tempo of the basketball game, playing with a lead, playing in crunch time situations, and being able to do that is important. But I asked Mike Neighbors, because this is a situation where they played Marquette, they lost. They come on the road to a ranked Florida State team who was playing really good basketball. They go home, play UCLA. I asked the coach, what do you want to see from your team? He said, I want to see us take care of the basketball, handle turnovers, execute offensively. And this is a challenge because this is a team right now. He said, we don't quite know where we are. This part of our schedule will show us where we're really good and where we're really bad. And we can shore up those really bad areas as we head into conference play. They haven't looked any bit bad no. here tonight. They got off to that slow start offensively. And boy, since the second quarter, they've taken over. That's Gordon's chance for a three. Poffenbarger, by the way, now with 23 rebounds so she has the arkansas record all by herself and a great display by the razorback team that head coach mike neighbors says has the biggest potential for growth he's very excited for this team to grow together scott is a true freshman and she's fantastic she sure is i've been impressed with her poise and composure we've mentioned it struggled early but stuck to it Found her stride. Offensive players, you're going to have days where you struggle, but you got to continue to let it fly, and she has. Latson with a nice pass leading to the, the shot by White. Arkansas shooting 32%, but boy, the second half has belonged to them. They outscored Florida State 24 to 6 in the third, actually being outscored by five here in the fourth, but they are going to come away with a victory and move to 7 and 1 on the season. After trailing by eight points in the second quarter, Watson shows some of her skill. Well, Florida State going to play Kent State and Jacksonville before they go to Uncasville, Connecticut to play UCLA, which is Arkansas's next opponent. But holy, Mike Neighbors has got to be pleased with what he saw. And Poffenbarger was just a beast on the glass. Yeah, she was 